Hello guys and girls and welcome to another video on my channel. Welcome back to podcast. I'm trying something a bit different today, as you can tell by the video title, the thumbnail, all that jazz. We're not just going to be playing Harry Potter games to talk about Hogwarts Legacy or Quidditch Champions. No, I want to sort of venture out into the actual world of Harry Potter, do ranking sort of weird sort of videos like this one. Um, hence why I renamed my channel podcast instead of Retro Wizard. I really do want to focus in on the magical world of the wizarding world, do a bit of you know, talking about the movies, the books, ranking, discussing characters, all that fun stuff. We're starting off with a bit of a fun video today. I'm going to be ranking the dumbest character in each Harry Potter book. So what I mean by that is, we're going to be starting with Foster Stone, and just the person who's got the stupid actions, who I think should be smarter, you know, things like that. So we'll start with Foster Stone, we'll go in with Deathly Hallows. I want all your guys' opinions down below, so you, you tell me who you think the dumbest character is in all the books, uh, each book, and who's the dumbest character overall. Maybe I'll do a little shout out to them at the end of the video, but I can't wait to hear from you guys. Do give a like, subscribe, all that jazz. Come join my Discord, it's all in the link below. And without further ado, let's get into it. Who's the dumbest character in Fofs of Stone? So with Fofs of Stone, it was a bit of a, not a tricky one per se, but there's no one obvious that jumps out. You know, Hagrid's a bit stupid, he says a few things, you know, should have said that, and like, all that stuff. But for me, there's only one, and it is Vernon Dursley. He thinks he can outsmart wizards. Wizards who are sending letters to a boy in his house, knowing where he sleeps, when he changes, all that stuff. You know, they flood his house with letters, and it's from that, I think the line that makes him the dumbest is, when he's like, oh, we'll just ignore the letters, Petunia. And Petunia's like, I don't think that'll work. Oh, nonsense. They, wizards don't think like that sort of thing. So it's easily stupid. He thinks he's got to beat the wizards, not have Harry go to Hogwarts, be able to outrun them, outsmart them at every turn. And literally at every point, he just gets torn apart. You know, changes Harry from the downstairs to the upstairs. They know. Send hundreds, you know, hundreds of letters in on a Sunday when he thinks... No post on Sunday. Mate, there is post on Sunday. Ask Amazon. Um, but no, and then he goes to the hotel in Corkworth. All the letters turn up there. He then just has an absolute breakdown thinking, you know what, I've had enough. We're going to move to a hut on the rock for a bit. And then Hagrid turns up. And he still then tries to defend his honour. Defend that he's going to beat these wizards. Harry's not going to Hogwarts. You never go win, mate. You're Vernon Dursley. You're not being a half giant in Hagrid or Albus Dumbledore. And it ends up with his son having a, ta a pig's tail. So, yeah. Dumb move, Vernon. But don't worry. You're not the dumbest character in the series overall. On to Chamber of Secrets. I think there's a few easy books, and Chamber is one of them. I'm going with Albus Percival Wolfric Brian. Dumbledore. You're supposed to be the smartest wizard ever. You have the greatest wizard of your age. All that jazz. Chamber of Secrets was open when you was, you know, uh, teaching 50 years ago. You had a lot of time to think about it. You think it's Tom Riddle. You know there's a connection with Slivering. Slivering's monster. You know all about parcel tongue. All that stuff. You see people getting petrified. The cat, Mrs Norris, Nick, Justin. And you're not putting two and two together and thinking, Oh, could be a basilisk, you know? Petrification, you know, it takes a bloody second year in Hermione, a 12 year old girl will go to the library about eight months in just because you're about to be suspended to find the page on Basilisk. The roosters are getting killed, Hagrid tells you about that. You know, it all fits, as Harry says. Like, how are you, the greatest wizard of ever, basically, not putting it together right? It's a Basilisk, protecting your students, protecting your staff? Fair enough not knowing where the chamber is. I'm not even bothered about that because, you know, you get a speak parcel tongue. You know, Harry does put it together in the end. But it's just the fact he doesn't know it's a basilisk and doesn't put them security sort of measures in place to protect people from a basilisk. I just think he should be on this. Maybe not even just after... Maybe even after... Um, Mrs. Norris, you know, he's been, she's been petrified, Slivering's monster, but definitely after Colin Creevy, come on Dumbledore, you must be seeing all this stuff, the Ruskers are getting killed, and then after Justin Flinks Fletcher, like, you deserve to be suspended, to be honest, I, I have no sympathy for you, Lucius Malfoy's right, even if it's against, you know, he's plotting this all, you should be better, you should be smarter, you should be saving your school, but no, you leave it all to three 12-year-olds, one of which has a broken wand, one of which ends up petrified, 
and one who's just a bit of an idiot, Harry. But no, there we go. Dumbledore, you're on the dumbest characters list. I'm sorry, you're supposed to be smart, but you're not really. On to Prisoner. So I think Prisoner Aspang was quite a hard one for me. I, I thought about it a lot, and I mean, I'm going with an obvious character. I'm going with Sirius Black. You know, he's you know the main villain for a lot of it, or the main antagonist. Turns out he's a good guy. But the reason he's dumb is that's not how an innocent man acts, like Dumbledore says when Harry and Hermione try to convince, tell him about his innocence. He hasn't acted like an innocent man. There's been no proof, Pettigrew's finger, all that stuff. That's not his fault. But the way he's acted this year, he's broke out of Azkaban. He's slashed up the blooming fat lady. He stood over Ron's bed with a knife. He seems a bit of a psychopath. I know he's angry. I know he's, you know, he's probably not in the best mental state. He's been in Azkaban for 12 years. But... Surely he should have tried to reach out to Dumbledore. Him knowing what Dumbledore's like uh, as a person who's known him for God knows how many years, he should have tried to reach out to Dumbledore. I'm sure Dumbledore would have probably believed him. You know, he's quite a trusting person, as we've seen with a lot of things. But the way he goes and acts, he's like he wants to be. Yeah, he he just wants to be villain of Hyde. And his plan to kill Pettigrew. I know he's like, I want to be incarcerated for the murder I've done, sort of thing. But like, don't, uh, Harry convinces them. It's just a stupid plan. You kill Pettigrew, the truth dies with him. You know, alive, you're set free. It just, you know, I know you're a bit angry, but it's a bit of a stupid and dumb plan. And the way he goes about it, yeah, really stupid. Um, should be smart, should have got Dumbledore, should have tried to talk him in. And yeah, then Dumbledore, like he does after Prisoner, he helps him. You know, after having a talk, surprisingly. So yeah, serious. Not the best move, but yeah, by no means the dumbest character. On to Goblet of Fire. So for Goblet of Fire, I've had a last second change. All this time I've been thinking, Ludo Bagman, surely, you know, the way he puts all them bets on, the way he tries to con people like friend George, the way it all ends for him where the goblins have the last laugh because Harry doesn't outright win. But I was thinking, no, you know who's stupider than him? Just, just before I hit record on this next segment, Ron Weasley. For believing Harry put his name in the goblet and falling out with him, moping, sulking, you know, being a little baby, really. I know he's a bit jealous sometimes and Harry gets all the attention, but to believe Harry really put his name in this thing and he wouldn't tell Ron, or he wouldn't tell anyone, or even after it happened, he wouldn't do it. Like, Ron, mate, you're just being a big, stupid baby and you should have just grown up, like, being there for Harry. It's, it's a horrible time for Harry, them a few months. You know, everyone's against him, other than Hermione. Everyone's really sort of, well, I'm friend, you know, a few Gryffindors, but yeah, like all the Slytherings, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaws with them badges, Potter stinks, Cedric, Diggory, you know, the Cedric badges. And Ron's just there being a bit of a prat, really. Um, you know, his little mind, getting his mind, bit, you know, his bruised ego sort of thing, um, betrayed. But yeah, poor Harry, wrong, bit of a stupid, but honourable honorable mention for Ludo Bagman for just being a bit of a gambling addict, got himself in a bit of a spot of mess. Hero to zero by the end of it, you know. He's a laughing stock, you know, people make jokes about him in order of a thing, it's yeah. Honourable mention to him, but wrong. Grow up, mate. Order of the Phoenix is easily the easiest one for me. You know, you can't pick anyone else. It's Cornelius Fudge. It starts in the parting of the ways, chapter 36 of Goblet of Fire, and obviously it stems all the way through to the very end of Order of the Phoenix, where he finally says he's back. But the reason he is stupid, obviously, is just his denial. He's grasping onto power. He's denial that Voldemort's back. The way he villainifies Potter, Dumbledore, you know, tries to smear people like the Weasleys, you know, anyone who's got a close connection with Dumbledore, and just the blatant lies and the political mess he creates, you know, for using the Daily Prophet to use, as in his, his tools, the things he tries to implement at Hogwarts with Umbridge spying, you know, trying to arrest Dumbledore for sedition and all that jazz. Um, yeah, just really stupid, you know, he could have acted in Goblet of Fire. Um, and sometimes you think, where does it come from? Like, like, I know there's these little bits with you know the stuff about Harry having his daydreams, you know, and I guess the Prince of Aspang stuff. It sort of does slowly build up, and he's you know worry about it all. But it's just such a stupid and dumb move. It costs him his job, his reputation. He goes down as the worst minister for magic ever, probably. And that's saying something because there was a guy who's bloody imperious in Pies Fitness. 
who's a puppet. He's probably still a better minister for magic than good old Cornelius. Yeah, it's just an awful, awful look. It, I just, it's so annoying every time you get to that sort of chapter 36 and you know, the way he berates Harry, the way he berates Dumbledore, the way he just sort of stems out with McGonagall. And then you sort of see him. You don't, I'd love to have had Harry and Cornelius Fudge speak at Dumbledore's funeral in the book. You don't get that, unfortunately, but yeah, big dum dum. Uh, and yeah, probably the easiest one to pick. Just absolutely stupid, ruined. So, you know, if they'd have had a year to prepare for Voldemort on the lookout, it might have been different, but no, there we have it. You ruined it all, Cornelius. On to Half Blood Prince. Now, with Half Blood Prince, again, I was tempted to go for. The Minister for Magic, uh, Rufus Scrimgeour. I don't think he learns from Cornelius Fudge's mistakes. He tries to use Harry as a political tool after everything that went on. He didn't go about the Voldemort thing in the best way. I think he was a bit too aggressive. Yeah, he was just very cagey, his relationship with Dumbledore. I think he made the same mistakes as Cornelius Fudge and sort of leads to the Ministry of Magic falling. But no, I'm going with Percy Weasley. And for you people who may have not read the books, you're probably like, what? Percy's not in the you know, like the film. So, if you've not read the books, Percy goes to the Burrow. There's no Bellatrix or Strange at the Burrow in the book because that's just stupid because Voldemort should just go if Bellatrix can go, but there we have it. Not important. Him and Rufus Scrimgeour go. And so Percy falls out with Mr. and Mrs. Weasley uh, over the Cornelius Fudge thing. So Fudge hires him as his personal assistant. And Weasley, uh, Arthur and uh, Percy have a massive argument. Everyone falls out because he doesn't believe Harry and Dumbledore. You know, he's with the Ministry. And even after it comes out, he still doesn't forgive his family until the seventh foot, uh, you know, Death of Hallows. And Dumbledore goes, you know, it's harder to forgive people when you're wrong than when, you, uh, sorry, when they're right rather than when they're wrong. You know, it's harder to do that. But he should be, you know, truth's out, go make up with him. He even just appears there, he doesn't want to be there, it's just an excuse so Scrimgeour can speak to Harry. And it's just so stupid. Like, Percy, you know, he's, he's always been a bit of a knob. But that, yeah, book five, book six, obviously, coming around book seven, and it's quite heartbreaking when Fred dies and he's over his body. But no, Percy, just grow up. What is it with you Weasleys and being so stubborn and stupid? Grow backbone, say sorry to your dad, and you can get along as a happy family again. But no, you just had to ruin it, didn't you? So on to the final book, Deathly Hallows. I wonder who the stupidest character in this one's going to be. And without a doubt, the stupidest character in Deathly Hallows is Voldemort. You know, he gets to the top quite early on. You know, he takes over the ministry. But seriously, like... Every decision he does after that, you know, he's chasing the Elder Wand. The thing where they're at Malfoy Manor and, you know, he, you know, they touch the, the, death, uh, the dark mark. You know, I know he's at Hogwarts, but this guy then decides to, you know, probably, fl he flies, doesn't he? He does that stupid thing. I know it's a book technique of like, oh, how can we save Harry here? Just apparate, mate. You apparate there. Harry's there. You kill him. Or, well, if you can do anyway. Then, obviously, the whole thing with the Elder Wand, it wasn't ever his. Just every decision, the Horcruxes, it all just falls apart. He gets it, and then he's beaten by a 17-year-old. I mean, Dumb Voldemort's probably the dumbest character overall in the series. Like, every single thing he does is just a bit stupid. But, yeah, not a good moment for Dumbledore. Uh, sorry, for Dumbledore. It's a good moment for Dumbledore. You know, Voldemort finally gets defeated. But, yeah, Voldemort, you know, Darth Vader and the Emperor. You think about it, like, people make fun of Darth Vader and the Emperor sometimes. They had the Empire for, what, 30 years? Voldemort had it for, like, five months, six months before it all fell apart. Oh, well, you know, a bit of a concern. He had it for 10 months, I think. Yeah, August, for, August 1st to, what, May 2nd? So, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Nine months. You know, someone can have a baby in that time. Not a long time, is it, Dumbledore? Uh, Voldemort, I keep saying Dumbledore, but yeah, there we go, made a bit of a mess of it at the end, but Voldemort, you're a bit of a dumb person, and you probably would be my dumbest character overall in the series, like everything you do, you, just can't, you can't be a baby, you can't be an 11 year old, 12 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old, 17 year old, and you die, like, come on man, pathetic, but who do you guys think, like I say, do let me know below, give a like, comment, subscribe, I'll see you on the next video, and come join my Discord. Bye-bye.